Historically, July is the best month of the year for the stock market, and we certainly saw the stock market rise again this past July. However, August is normally flat, and September is normally a down month for the stock market. So will the stock market continue its historical path? Well, so far, earnings season could be that determining factor. And for the S&P 500 companies that have reported so far, about half of them have beat earnings expectations and about half of them has missed earnings expectations. So overall, earnings have pretty much come in line with expectations. But this earnings season could threaten the lofty stock valuations that we currently have. While stocks have climbed, corporate profits have fallen. Companies in the S&P 500 are set to log a roughly 7% year-over-year decline in earnings for the second quarter. Earnings expectations for the third and fourth quarters have dropped also. The optimism in the markets could soon evaporate if profits get squeezed further. Companies in the S&P 500 are trading at about 19.7 times their projected earnings over the next 12 months. In other words, the average forward P.E. in the S&P 500 is 19.7, and that is above the five-year average of 18.6. So far this earnings season, though, companies are beating Wall Street projections at a greater rate than they have over the past two years. So earnings so far are holding up, which is why we haven't quite seen a big sell-off in stocks yet. But we'll have to pay attention to the rest of the earnings that are coming up over the month of August to see if we can maintain this rally or not. Uber reported earnings, and their business is finally making money after years of losses. So with Uber finally turning a profit, you would expect the stock to rally, right? Well, no. The stock actually fell by more than 5% today. And the reason for this is because the valuations were so high that even after Uber turned a profit, it just wasn't enough to cause the stock to continue to rise even further further. And Starbucks beat earnings estimates. Starbucks reported a dollar earnings per share versus 95 cents expected. Revenue came in at a slight miss at 9.17 billion versus 9.29 billion expected. But despite the earnings beat, Starbucks was still down a little less than 1% as of the recording of this video. And even though Pinterest revenue grew, their expenses grew more than the revenue went up. Pinterest reported revenue of $708 million versus $696 million expected. Earnings came in at a $0.21 cent per share loss versus $0.12 cents per share expected. And Pinterest was down slightly at about 0.10% on the day. So we've seen a lot of stocks that had extremely lofty valuations get killed even after beating earnings. We saw this happen with Tesla where they beat earnings and the stock was down 10%. And a lot of the reason for this is because these stocks have priced in such perfection. They've priced in such incredible growth that even if they have good growth, it's not enough to meet the valuations that these stocks are demanding. And so we're seeing stocks fall even after beating earnings estimates. Now, this isn't true with every stock. We have seen some stocks rise because they were priced correctly. Shares of ELF Beauty rose after they beat earnings estimates and provided full year guidance that came in higher than analysts were expecting. Elf Beatty reported a dollar and 10 cents per share of earnings versus just 56 cents per share expected. Revenue came in at 216 million versus 118 million expected. Now, you would think that with a massive earnings beat like this, where earnings were double what analysts were expecting, the stock would absolutely rally. And yes, it was up 16% after hours, but this is not the, say, 100% rally I would have expected. So why did ELF only go up 16% after having this insane, 
insane earnings beat where they doubled analyst expectations. Why was the after hours rise only 16%? Why wasn't it 100%? Well, the reason is because ELF was going into earnings with an extremely high valuation. They were going into earnings with a forward P.E. ratio of 63. That means ELF was going into earnings with an insane revenue growth and an insane earnings growth already priced into the stock. So even after beating analyst estimates by double, it was mostly already priced in, which is why we're only seeing a 16% rise in ELF. Now, when it comes to AMD, this was like the complete opposite. AMD's revenue fell 18% as the PC market showed weakness. Earnings came in at 58 cents per share versus 57 cents per share expected. And revenue came in at 5.36 billion versus 5.31 billion expected. So earnings were a slight beat, but we also have to understand that this is still a major decline in earnings. And again, this is what you have to remember about these earnings expectations is that the expectations might be for a significant decline in earnings and revenue. And if the company does not decline in earnings and revenue by as much as analysts were expecting, we could see the stock rally even though the earnings were bad. But AMD didn't just have a bad quarter. For the third quarter, AMD also said that they expect only $5.7 billion in sales, while analysts were looking for a revenue of $5.81 billion. The fact is, AMD's processor business has slowed in recent quarters, reflecting a deep slump in the global PC market. AMC has now reported two straight quarters in a row of declining year-over-year -year revenue. So after the second quarter in a row of horrible earnings, plus AMD lowering their forward guidance for Q3, you would expect this stock to absolutely sell off. But it didn't. It rallied over 4% after hours after already rallying 2.8% on the day. So why did AMD stock rally after a second quarter in a row of horrible earnings? Well, the answer is quite simple. AMD is one of the few companies making high-end graphics processing units or GPUs needed for artificial intelligence. During the quarter, AMD announced a new chip that's intended to build and run the kind of AI models that are at the heart of applications like ChatGPT. So simply put, AMD is continuing to run up on AI hype. And this makes the earnings that are going to be coming out later this month very difficult to predict because some stocks that have been able to continue the AI hype have rallied, like AMD. Other stocks that have failed to continue the AI hype have sold off, like Microsoft. So let's take a look at what other earnings are coming out later this week so that you can get prepared for those as well. Now, Wednesday after the close, we have PayPal and Shopify, but Thursday after the close is the big one. Thursday after the close, we've got Coinbase, Block, Airbnb, DraftKings, Cloudflare, but the ones that everybody is going to be interested in are Amazon and Apple. Now, neither Apple nor Amazon are extremely strong in the AI space yet, it's going to be interesting to see what happens after earnings. I will tell you that Apple is going into earnings at only a slightly elevated valuation, but Amazon is going into earnings with an extremely elevated valuation. In fact, Amazon is going into earnings valued even higher than Tesla was when they went into earnings. So, Apple is still a bit of a toss up, but when it comes to Amazon, it's almost like a no brainer that this stock should sell off unless they can pull off a miracle and boost and get some AI hype going. 
the valuation on Amazon is just so high right now that I just don't see any way for Amazon to rise after earnings. Like I said, outside of some miracle of some huge AI hype coming into the stock. Now, even though Apple and Amazon earnings are going to move the market significantly on Friday, there is something else that's going to move the markets a lot on Friday as well, and that is the July labor report. The July jobs report is going to be important because this is going to show us if the economy really is continuing to slow down and possibly entering recession in the next six to 12 months, or if the economy remains resilient and we might avoid a recession and actually pull off the first soft landing in the history of the United States. The job market is definitely undergoing an immaculate cooling, but despite slowing down, the job market still remains very strong. Now, as we continue through this earnings season, I continue to buy some stocks and options in order to try to make money during this earnings season. I don't like to do straight calls and puts because it's very difficult to make money with those. But one thing I did do today was do an AMD credit put spread. An AMD credit put spread, credit put spreads make money when the stock goes up. The nice thing about a credit put spread is it doesn't matter how much the stock goes up. It just has to go up. So for example, with my AMD credit put spread, if it even went up 0%, I would actually make money on that put spread. If it goes up by 4%, I'm going to make money. If it goes up by 8%, I make money. 1%, I make money. It actually doesn't matter. With a call option, if you had done a call option at AMD, you would have had to see AMD rise significantly just to even break even. But with the credit put spread, all I have to do is see AMD not go down in order to make money. And with that, I want to show you guys how to do some of these more complicated options. I have some free training coming up this weekend on Saturday right here on YouTube. We're going to be doing free training showing you how to do these credit put spreads and credit call spreads, which will significantly increase the chances of you making money with options. So keep your eye out on Saturday for that free training on YouTube. I will have more details coming up later in the week. If you got a lot out of this video, then be a good friend and share this video with your friends and family on your social media pages so that others will know what's going on with earnings as well. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And if you missed the video I posted earlier in the day on Tuesday, which covered some of the stocks that I had bought in the Millionaire Club portfolio, if you want to know what I'm buying during this time, make sure you go watch the last video that I uploaded here.